everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gavin Demi, and I might look like an influencer right now, but that's because I'm going out tonight, so don't mind this look. So today's topic, as you can see from the title, is actually talking about Joanna Cedilla. She's been talked about on a lot of videos uh, from other influencers, and I'm not talking about her from an influencer perspective. I'm, I'm gonna talk about her from an influencer relationships manager perspective. So my job every day is to look at influencers, to see who's up and coming, to see what platforms are doing really well, and to pick the best influencers for brand deals. So sometimes my brand, sometimes my budget is $70,000. So if, um, say, Uber Eats or another brand wants to hire X amount of influencers with a reach of like 500 to a million followers, and then I go out and find the best influencer. And I don't just hire any influencers. I get a lot of managers come to me and was like, sends me a list of their influencers that they represent and I can't use any of them because they're not brand safe. So you can be an influencer and have hundreds of thousands of followers, but a brand is not gonna come to you if you're not brand safe. When I say brand safe, I mean like, you're not posting half naked pictures on Instagram, you're not posting bikini photos on Instagram, you're not just a typical Instagram model. And she is not a typical Instagram influencer or YouTube because she was able to really capitalize on how, just how fast she grew within six months. She literally had zero followers, subscribers, and then back in September she had 100,000, and now she's at 1.7 million, million. I don't get it. I, it, boggles, it boggles my mind. But I look at her content and I still, regardless of how many followers she has, I, I honestly, I, I can't hire her for anything. If you look at her Instagram page, I, I, there's nothing I can do for this. I mean, unless I work for a brand who doesn't care about what the photo looks like. With Uber Eats, they care about what the photo looks like. They care about you telling a story. That's the main purpose of their campaigns. They want you to tell a story. They really want people to, kind of like the life hacker or like lifestyle kind of content. So they're not gonna hire just anyone, regardless of how many followers you have. You have millions and millions of followers, but are those followers really going to resonate with the brand if you post about something? You capitalize on your stuff based on you being weird and quirky, and that's fine. Your content does, does amazing that way. It's not my type of content that I like to watch, and that's because I'm not her audience. I'm 28, she's younger. The younger demographics definitely watches her, and she's like the next Emma, whatever her last name, Chamberlain. But what I like about Emma compared to her is that Emma actually has cohesiveness behind her stuff. She actually has a story to tell. This girl, I don't know anything about her other than that, other than she's weird. She's smart too for a young girl. She knows when to drop something, when people are talking about it, and when it's relevant. So I give her props for that, but I'm sorry, Joanna. If a brand came to me and it was like, I want, you know, I need this type of influencer with this reach and I try to show you to them, they're gonna be like, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna hire her because what is she about? This is why I can't give her brand deals and this is why I can't give just any influencer brand deals. I can have the biggest budget and hire literally someone with three million followers, but if, you're, if your Instagram and YouTube doesn't make sense and it's not brand safe and you're not telling a story, then I can't really do anything with with you i can't you might be called an influencer in your space for a reason do you but i need influencers who it's not just posting a pretty photo anymore you really have to go out there and you really have to create content that's telling a story so joanna if you are watching this video <laughs> i told you it was going to be a quick video because i have to go out but if I, you are watching this video my biggest advice to you is just tell more of a story <laughs> on your Instagram and show the real you. Even if that means you being weird, that's fine, be weird. Just have more content behind that than just the weirdness. Don't just do a video of you cutting your hair. Like, I don't know, just add some, some value to people. And you know, you have 1.7 million subscribers. So a lot of people are looking up to you. So it is a powerful thing to have. So use it wisely, do more stuff. Keep being weird, do you boo, because it's gonna work, but 
if you want brand deals and you want people, you know, like freaking, what's her name? Uh, Catch me outside girl, she capitalized. She was able to build an audience, but she was also able to tell a story and I'm not the biggest fan of her by all means, but she was smart. She, t she told her story, she capitalized on it by creating music and she just did more stuff than just being ratchet and loud. So, <laughs> I mean, she was smart too. She was really able to build an empire behind, she can't, she just signed a $900,000 freaking beauty deal. That's crazy. Anyways, enough rambling. I just wanted to give my two cents about Joanna and also what I look at when it comes to brand deals. And I, I mean, I literally, my next video is gonna go in detail, step by step and like my process from influencer selections to what the brand thinks to negotiating and all that stuff. So if you're interested in that kind of content, then please subscribe and like this video and I'll see you next time. Bye y'all. This is why I need to smoke because I just get nervous in front of the camera. I don't know why, I just do.